it's just, it's a very special moment, very special. Hello there and welcome to another day of landscape photography and we're straight into it today because I am here with subscriber number one to First Man Photography and we are in the Lake District. I'll introduce you to him in a short while. You may have seen him in the background before but I've got a shot set up and this is what I love about the Lake District. The second you start to gain just even a tiny bit of altitude the views open up and just instantly you've got a shot. Now with the scene behind me at the moment, the light is by no means perfect, but it's just one I want to get in the bag because what I have noticed from this position is all the trees down in the valley below are starting to get some of those really beautiful autumn colours. There's some browns and some oranges and a bit of yellow as well. It's not completely turned, but it's there. And from the position I'm in right now, there's a really nice sort of S shape or zigzag shape up through the scene towards Grasmere in the distance and then Lufrig Fell which you have seen me on several times before so I just love the shape of those trees and once I get them into post-processing I'll be able to pull out some of those or some of those autumnal colours which will just lead us up to the lake and then to the to the mountain in the distance or the fell in the distance I just think it's gonna be really really good there's a couple of problems with it firstly are the trees that are kind of lining this cliff edge that was stood on. This one here with the nice berries on. I could possibly include that, but I'm not going to. And then this one just here. So they are sort of creeping into the image a little bit. As I've talked about several times before, quite recently, is always be thinking about what's going on around the edge of your frame. And then also you need to then decide what you want to include in your frame and then exclude as well. So I've gone to the vertical to keep these two trees out and just use the bit of a gap I've got here to see the view. But then it's not working top to bottom. So I'm going to crop the top off and then I'll probably have to crop a little bit off the bottom to get rid of that tree. Therefore, it will be a square crop. I'll still get that nice shape through there and everything else I've just talked about. So I think it's gonna be just a really nice start to the day, even though the light is not perfect, but very changeable weather today. It could go either way. It could be incredible or it could cloud over and this will be the best light I've got all day. So I'm going to make the most of this moment. Right, uh, settings. Let's talk settings. Very straightforward. F11, 125th of a second, ISO 100. I'm focusing on the kind of first set of trees just down there. And then I'm going to bracket as well because this, that sky is really bright. So I'm just going to bracket two stops either side. Check on the frame that's exposing for the sky to make sure that those highlights are not blown out because if you blow them out, you're not getting them back. Uh, and that's it. So I'm focused, I'm ready. I'm just gonna auto focus in the point I've got set. Two second timer, one, two, bracketed shots. And there we go, quick look. And I think that's just a really nice start for the day. Those highlights look good, very nice. Right, so I'm set up for my second shot of the day. And when you're in the Lake District or any mountainous environment like this where you've just got these incredible scenes all around you it's very tempting to only shoot that because it is so beautiful and so distracting but there are opportunities elsewhere to use the 7200 lens to get in close on the mountains to create something possibly a bit more artistic a bit more intimate and definitely a bit more unique now it's difficult to sort of teach or advise how to do that on a general basis. If you're here on a workshop, it would be fine, but it's because mountains look very different in different conditions. So for example, today, this is what I'm shooting at the moment. This mountain behind me here, I don't know the name of it, but with that light and that cloud on it at the moment, it just looks really, really interesting. And I've composed a shot with the 7200. I'm actually just at 70 millimeters, so I'm not in too close. I'm going for a square crop again, so I'm excluding the edges of the image. And then with the shape of the mountain, it's again producing almost like another zigzag shape 
through my image. Now that's working really nicely here because the light is kind of enhancing that zigzag shape as well. Once you've got that, and once you've sort of got a, a, a shape and a composition that you like, it's then just a case of waiting for the right light. And the light's changing all the time at the moment, so I'm just continually firing off. I'm bracketing just to be safe. The wind's got up as well a little bit. But I just think that's a really nice kind of intimate mountainous shot with some really interesting lights. I can then either process it, I'm sort of feeling maybe a real warm type processing, contrasty to bring out that light or potentially just go black and white and make the image all about the interesting structure and shape and the light. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that works when I get back into post-processing. But yeah, it's a nice composition uh, at f11, 1 60th of a second, ISO 100, bracketing one stop either side on this occasion actually, uh, two second timer. There we go. Yeah, I mean, it works really nicely. Very simple, but really rather nice, I think. So yeah, I'm happy with that for my second shots of today. So here we are at the top of Helm Crag. This is Lyle. You may have seen him in the background of various videos over the years. We've known each other since we were three years old. He was subscriber number one. And we have come out together today because not so long ago, I crossed the 100,000 subscriber mark. And when you do that on YouTube, you probably know that you get a commemorative plaque. I'm not very good at celebrating my own successes. So I don't particularly want to put it up on my wall, but what I thought I would do is hike it to the top of a mountain and take a picture of it on the top of a mountain. So I think what we're going to do, or I am going to do, is climb to the top of the rock formation called the Lion and the Lamb to take a picture of it from up there. It's a bit dodgy though, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I'm looking at it now and it looks fairly steep and a little bit hairy. Uh, there's a bit of wind, um, but I think I think you can do it. I can do it. Mm. <laughs> You've got to celebrate the success. <laughs> it's like one of those, uh, like one of those terrible Instagram moments though, where people climb to ridiculous places and then, then that's get, the end. Yeah, that's the last bit. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope not. But anyway, it's a good. But way you're going to go. film it with a drone, aren't you? So you're film it with the drone. We'll get if few... I fall, it will be, it'll be on camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get a few nice shots, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you when we're up there. Cool. Right. Right. This is it. That is the plaque with first man photography on it. So I'm going to climb up to the top of the lion, I think that is, uh, prop it on a rock and take a picture of it. I'll take the camera. Right, here we go. Just adjust that. My mum is not gonna like this when she watches it back. Not one bit. Ah. And there we are with a quite big drop down there. I mean, I do have some, 360 degree views all the way around. And if you've been watching me for a long time, then that was something I used to say when I got to the top of these mountains. Right, let's try and find a spot. Whoa, <laughs> I don't really want this to go off the edge. And I think, how's that? I think that could be. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I hope this is worth it. <sighs> So after that, I'm now set up and we're camping tonight. If you can see the tents behind me there, very excited about that. We've got some nice food, good company. It's gonna be a nice evening with that as the view. Now, my shot here is not gonna be anything complicated. A lot of what this channel was built on, or the vlogs were built on at least, was about climbing up a mountain and taking a picture. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm not going for anything complicated. I'm just gonna look at this view and take a picture of it. I do have the crag and the path that we walked up with a lot of that sort of autumnal bracken on there, which looks quite nice in the foreground, then just leading me up to some of those autumnal trees again. 
and it's just a nice view and I'm going to take a photograph of it. I'm going to put Grassmere at the lake over to the left hand side of the frame which then allows me to get the mountain over there in the shot as well. Nice wide angle, 35 millimeters, uh, some sun and light threatening from the west. I don't think we're going to get any light on the land so it's not going to be the most spectacular shot ever but if there is a bit of colour already in the sky now if that light comes good, gets below the cloud line, if it's clear on the horizon, put some light up into these clouds, that could still be a really good shot. But yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. I'm just taking a picture of a nice view and that's all I'm doing because I like it. It's gonna remind me of what a nice day I've had. And that's simply what it's all about. Not every shot has to be complicated. Not every shot has to be the best one ever, but it still could be really good. Uh, F11. ISO 100 and one third of a second. I am going to bracket two stops either side of that, but I probably won't need to. It depends what the light does. Uh, but at the moment, I'll just be all right with that one frame. So I'm going to take a shot now. This looks quite nice. And then just very simply wait to see what the light does as sunset comes. And then I'm going to make myself some food on the stove and enjoy a pleasant evening up here. The light was threatening from the west and my goodness, it's now striking that hill in the distance and it just looks absolutely beautiful. I've now put the 70 to 200 on there because I just think that's a good way to go, to get in a bit closer and make it all about that light and the lake. Wow, what a way to finish, so nice. I'm just messing around with my camera settings because I've done it all very quickly. Am I focused? Autofocus. Yeah, that's. I don't have time to do anything differently. I'm bracketing F11 ISO 100, 125th of a second now, so I should be okay. Yeah, that's really so much better than I was expecting. I think I need oh, real time. Sorry, I just needed to spin around a bit there. Ah, oh, yes, look at that. Just amazing what a little, uh, a little change in the light can do. Still mucking it up with the settings though, get back to bracketing. <laughs> I'm working fast now, I know it's gonna be fleeting. I think I've got it though. That's why it's important to know your camera and know your settings. Ah, oh, that's exciting, what a way to finish. A nice bit of golden light hitting Lufferig Fell there in the distance. Yes, I love landscape photography. I love being out in this environment. Just fantastic. <laughs> that's what it's all about. So I'm a bit bleary eyed at the moment, having just woken up from the tent, but this is the reward you get when you wild camp. Just look at this sky and this scene behind me. All around me, in fact, I've got pink skies and it's just absolutely beautiful. What a way to start the day alongside a mate in the Lake District with conditions as beautiful as this. The thing is, you don't have any time to lose when it's like this. So I'm trying to work quickly. All I'm doing is there's some interesting cloud down in the valley, like a very small inversion. And what that's doing is putting some perspective and depth into the image as it, as it winds through the valleys. And that's what I'm focusing on. I want to keep this as natural as possible. So I'm keeping the ta Grasmere town out of it. I've got the horizon on the bottom rule of thirds with that sort of S curve going around the scene into that beautiful pink sky. I'm in it's about 135 millimeters. I'm at one and a half second exposure. It's probably a little bit bright now. I'm gonna turn that down to one quarter of a second. F11, I'm bracketing either side just in case. And it's fantastic. Ha! <sighs> it's just made it all so worth it. I mean, it was worth it anyway, but then when you're rewarded with this, I mean, just look how intense that is over there. Absolutely. What a fantastic way to start the day. 
If you've never done this, you really should because it's just, it's a very special moment, very special and great photography too.